Hi YouTubers, in this video I want to discuss the reasons why men commit suicide. Most people will be aware that men commit suicide three times as much as women. And this is often something that's very perplexing. Why, why do we kill ourselves? Why do we want to not live anymore? Anyway, here are my reasons as to why the male gender commits suicide three times more than the female gender. Firstly, social isolation. Men can be more tempted to be socially isolated. In other words, we get these incels, hermits, whatever you want to call them, who don't do very well with the opposite sex. Don't, they may suffer from social anxiety or something like that. And they become socially isolated. Now, this is not very good. It's not very good to be a hermit. You can not be in a relationship with a woman, that's fine. But if you don't have any friends or whatever to call on, you become socially isolated. And that social isolation leads you to uh, carry on thinking. You stay in your house and you think. You think about all the negative things and what's not going well. And then that leads down to the path of uh, suicide. This is more prone, men are more prone to this than women. Because with women, there's women are more sort of social creatures. They're more likely to go and socialise with someone or people are more likely to pick up on them if they're socially isolated. Two, emotional bondage. It is true that men struggle to show their emotions more so than women. Women are more likely, and it's more socially acceptable, shall we say, for women to show their emotions. Now, society says, oh, men should show your emotions more. Um, men should cry more and be more honest about their emotions. But the thing is, society, I believe, still doesn't want that. They don't want men to be open about their emotions because as soon as a man is open about his emotions, he gets called a weak man, effeminate or something like that. You see, if you're telling men, well, I want to, you to open up your emotions, you've got to then be prepared when that happens. You can't be then saying, oh, you know, you're not a real man or you're you're um, effeminate if you're being emotional about things. Many people have this, this saying that men should only be emotional when their mother or father dies or their wife dies, any of those sort of things. And then it's okay for a man to be emotional. But if a man is just going through financial stress or something or work stress and it's really getting to him, he can't cry. He's got to be a man. He's got to stand up and deal with those things without tears. So it becomes a problem. So men stuff all their emotions down inside still, even though society is saying you can uh, show your emotions. In reality, they know they can't. So they're shuffling their emotions down and it becomes a real problem. They become suicidal. They don't want to live anymore because they've got all of the, these intense emotions inside of them. Another reason is a loveless marriage. So this is where the man has married the wrong woman. And the differences between women being able to leave a relationship and men being able to leave is normally, even now, even in this feminist society, men are predominantly the bed breadwinners. So what that means is, is the man's most likely to own the house or be paying the rent on the apartment. So what that means is, is he can't just leave his apartment because he's still responsible for paying the rent or paying the mortgage. Yeah, but the woman can leave because she's not paying the rent, she's not paying the mortgage. So she's more able to, to free to just up and go. A man can't if he's the breadwinner. If in the unlikely circumstance, the woman is the breadwinner, then it's, it is easier for him to leave. But predominantly still in this society, when women are supposedly supposed to be more equal and equal to men, men are still predominantly the breadwinners. That's my experience of, of, of the life where I am. OK, so because of that, the man, the only way the man can get rid of the woman is to kick her out. Now, the problem is with that, there's a couple of problems. If the man kicks her out, one, he's got it on his conscience that she's got nowhere to go. OK, and you might think, well, if he's being abused or it's loveless, what difference does that make? Well, it does. When you're in a relationship with a woman, a man is in a relationship, he doesn't want to kick her out. He doesn't want her to have nowhere to go. He still loves her. She doesn't love him, but he still loves her, you see. So he doesn't want to kick her out, OK? So he's got to live with somebody who doesn't love him, OK? He's got to be in love and have that person there, even though that she doesn't love him. 
That is absolute agony. Okay? Absolute agony. Right? And also, if he did kick her out, he's got to deal with the in-laws and everybody who's saying he's a naughty and bad boy for kicking her out. Because as far as they're concerned, she's done nothing wrong. She's the princess. She's okay. So if he kicks her out, he's got to deal with all those people. And he's got that pressure down on him. So this is a really big reason why men commit suicide more than women, because women don't have to deal with that as much. Maybe when it actually does become more of an equal society and women do start being more the breadwinners, then maybe that will switch. Right. But for now, men are still predominantly the breadwinners. And that is a, a legitimate reason why they might go on to commit suicide. Another reason is lack of meaning and purpose. So if men don't have meaning or purpose to their lives, then they are like to commit suicide. Now, at this point, you're probably going to say to me, well, hold on a minute. That's true for women as well. Well, not quite. And I'll tell you why. When a woman is born into this world, she's born with a womb. She's born knowing she's a gender that gives birth to children. She is the gatekeeper of reproduction. She knows, even if she never has a child in her life, she knows her gender's purpose is to bring children into the world. I'm not saying that's women's only purpose, but that is a major purpose of women. Even if they go on with their careers, never marry, never have any children, that's still the purpose of their gender. One of the purposes is to be the gatekeepers for reproduction. Okay, And also they look much better than men. OK, they're much better, fairer looking gender. So because of that, that gives a woman innate worth and innate value. Men don't have innate worth and innate value when they are born into this world. They don't. OK, they have to earn that innate worth and value. So they have to earn it by having meaning and having purpose. Unlike women who don't have to earn that worth, they can just take their worth from the fact that they can have children and that they look much better than men. OK, but men, I'm not saying they're an ugly gender, but then they're, they're not a gender that's looked on as great because of their looks. OK, it's, to, it's to down to what a man does, what a man says and what a man does. OK, so me, lack of meaning and purpose is another reason why men might commit suicide. Another one is financial hardship. So um, he's having to balance the credit cards, perhaps his wife's going and spending all of the money on the credit cards, so on and so forth. See, the difference between um, male and, uh, and female financial hardship is female are more likely to get more help. For example, if a woman is out on the streets, OK, she's more likely to get a council accommodation than a man. The average man is the last person on earth that will get a, a council accommodation if they're homeless. For example, the first people that will get it is a woman and her children. They're the first people that will get council accommodation. The second people is the elderly. Then the third people is, is single women. And lastly, is men, single men on their own. So men are going to be homeless. They're not going to get council accommodation because even a single woman would have to wait six to eight weeks without any children, that is. We would have to wait six to eight weeks for council accommodation. I know because I've known people that have needed it. So therefore, you know, men are not likely to get any council accommodation at all, not for several months. And by that time, they'll probably be dead. So financial hardship is, is another one. And because women in marriage still rely heavily on the men to deal with the finances and be uh, the financial head, if things go wrong, he gets blamed by the in-laws and the wife and everybody for uh, causing that financial hardship. And that, that goes down on him then. Yeah. So it's just more weight down on him, yeah? So six is broken heartedness. So we know that women, it's a well-known statistic, initiate 70% of all divorces. That means 70% of all men are going to be the ones broken hearted, okay? So this broken heartedness is hard to deal with, coupled with the uh, fact of emotional bondage causes a very real reason for male suicide. It causes them not want to live anymore, and etc. etc. So broken heartedness, having their heart broken and smashed to pieces. Okay, and not many people take this on board when a man is divorced. They don't come around him and they say, Oh, you must be completely broken hearted, or I'm sorry for that. Particularly if the divorce is maybe his fault. Yes? Okay. Another one, Und undiagnosed mental health conditions. Things like uh, BPD or autism or bipolar disorder if he's not going to get diagnoses not going to 
find out what his health conditions are, then that will be another reason because he won't know why he's acting the way he's acting. I appreciate that reason can be also a reason why women might commit suicide as well. Another one is victim blaming. So uh, let's say a man is punched by his wife in the marriage. He goes to the police. The police laugh at him because he's got no evidence. The in-law said, oh, no, 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 no. My daughter would never do that to you. No, no, no. And even his parents won't stand up for him. And uh, he gets blamed. So for uh, another example is when uh, his wife hits him and he instinctively hits her back, which he should never do. But let's say on that, so, so now all of a sudden he's the bad guy because he's put his hands on a woman. Regardless of what the woman's done to him, he is the bad guy. But people don't take into account that she started it. OK, she hit him. Now, it's not right to hit a woman in that situation. Even if a woman hits you, it is not right to hit her back. But I understand why some men do it. I understand. Bill Blur done a famous uh, comedy uh, skit on um, around women getting hit. And he said that um, people say, oh, women, there's no reason to hit a woman. There is. There's hundreds of reasons to hit a woman. We just don't do it. You just shouldn't do it. There's hundreds of reasons, but you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't hit women, yeah, because it's irresponsible. Not because there isn't a reason, but because it's irresponsible. As soon as you put your hands on a woman, you are, have then lost your battle. You've lost your fight. You know, you are, end up being the loser, even though she was in the wrong all the time. Up to that point, you hit her, yeah? So, you know, what Bill Burr says is absolutely true about that. Um, another one is redundancy. A man gets made redundant uh, from his job because men, they they tend to have this view of work more so than women do. For the, for men, a man has to work. Work was made for man. Um, but I don't think that's true of women. I may be wrong and I, I accept if I am wrong about that because I'm not a woman. So if, if I'm wrong about that, fine. OK. But in my understanding, in my experience, men love their work. So when they get made redundant, it hits them much harder than, than it hits women. And because everybody's willing more to rally round women in those situations, it's not so much of a suicide reason for women as it is for men. It may be in some circumstances. Look, I'm not saying by making this video that women don't commit suicide or don't have reason to do so. I understand that. But the epidemic is that men commit suicide three times more than women do. OK, and that's why I'm making this video. I'm not making this video to say, oh, there's no pain that women go through. Women go through a lot of pain. And uh, there's many women who will try to take their lives or succeed in taking their lives. And that's awful. I really think that's awful. I don't want anybody to commit suicide. But this video is about men because men are three times more likely. It used to be four times more likely than women. But now it's gone down to three times more likely. Not that we can throw a party about that. And lastly post-traumatic stress disorder. So this is men who've got into the army and they, the stress of the uh, the army has meant that they've, they've got post-traumatic stress disorder. So they're a bit suicidal for that. Now, I know women are getting into the army as well and they can suffer with it. I'm not disputing that. So anyway, so those are my reasons why men commit suicide. Some of them, at least seven of them, are more uh, that they can commit suicide more than women and why. Okay, so... I'm making this video to raise awareness, not to get at anyone or whatever else. I am angry about it. I'm angry about the fact that men commit suicide three times more than women. I think it's not good. And I would say if you're somebody who's contemplating suicide watching this video, please get help. Please ring the Samaritans, please. Look them up online. Ring the Samaritans. Uh, find out. Talk to somebody. Please don't suffer alone. And please, please do not take your life, please.